Forget the political finger pointing. Christine Blasey Ford's accusation against Brett Kavanaugh needs to be seriously investigated. By the editorial board The editorial board represents the opinions of the board, its editor and a publisher. It is separate from the newsroom and the op-ed section. Imager Molly Snee Whatever becomes of Brett Kavanaugh's nomination to the Supreme Court, the Senate Judiciary Committee's process for considering him has been a mockery from the start, a mockery of lawmakers' constitutional responsibility and of the ideal that the court should be anything more than a political trophy. The bulk of the blame lies with Senator Chuck Grassley, the committee chairman, and his fellow Republicans, who have abused the power by refusing to let their colleagues and the American people see over 90% of the documents relating to Judge Kavanaugh's critical years in the federal government. Judge Kavanaugh sullied the proceedings himself by testifying, under oath, in ways that were at best misleading, about his role in several high-profile actions taken by the George W. Bush administration, where he worked in the White House Counsel's Office and as Staff Secretary to the President. Senator Dianne Feinstein, the ranking Democrat on the committee, is also now facing legitimate questions over her handling of the sexual assault allegation against Judge Kavanaugh that she received this summer but held back, based on a request for confidentiality, until it was leaked to the news media last week. Now the committee has a chance to partly redeem itself by allowing a thorough investigation and then holding an open hearing to address Christine Blasey Ford's accusation against Judge Kavanaugh about a night while they were in high school. Republicans complain that this is nothing but a Democratic plot to derail Judge Kavanaugh's nomination by delaying any vote until after the midterm elections. If anyone knows about unjustly delaying Supreme Court confirmations, it's Senate Republicans. Well, Democrats no doubt would prefer to delay a vote. And now that that's out of the way, can we please focus on what really matters here? What matters is that Dr. Blasey has made a serious, specific and credible allegation. Sure, Democrats may want to investigate that claim fully. But so should anyone concerned about protecting the Supreme Court's integrity, not to mention the reputations of both Judge Kavanaugh and Dr. Blasey. Dr. Blasey is right to want to wait for that fuller investigation to be completed before she agrees to testify. President Trump, demonstrating his usual ignorance of basic governmental functions, said on Tuesday, I don't think the FBI really should be involved, because, they don't want to be involved. If they wanted to be, I would certainly do that, but as you know, they say this is not really the thing. It is, in fact, their thing. The Bureau conducts background checks on nominees to federal government posts, and it can reopen a file at any time. In 1991, at the direction of President George H.W., Bush, the FBI, looked into Anita Hill's allegations of sexual harassment against Clarence Thomas, who had gone through his confirmation hearings weeks earlier. The investigation took three days. The resulting report was provided to the White House, which said it showed that Ms. Hill's allegations were unfounded. The Judiciary Committee reconvened a few weeks later and heard from nearly two dozen witnesses, including Ms. Hill and Justice Thomas. Does Mr. Grassley now want to set an even lower standard for taking a woman's claims seriously than the committee did when Ms. Hill appeared before it? In an op-ed published by The Times on Tuesday, Ms. Hill called for a thorough investigation by a neutral body with experience in sexual violence cases, and said it should not be rushed. A week's preparation is not enough time for meaningful inquiry into very serious charges, she wrote. Yet Mr. Grassley has rejected calls to involve the FBI. And offered to hear only from Dr. Blasey and Judge Kavanaugh themselves, even though there are numerous people who might be able to shed light on what may have happened on the night in question. 
First among these is Judge Kavanaugh's high school friend Mark Judge, who drive. Blazy said was in the room where she said the assault occurred, and who has given shifting answers about his recollections. Speaking of unreliable memories, it's laughable for Republicans to complain, as some do, that Dr. Blazy's claim is too old to be considered. The Senate Judiciary Committee is not a court of law, it's an arena of politics. Remember that less than a decade ago, Republican senators were happy to grill Sonia Sotomayor, President Barack Obama's first pick for the court, about positions taken 30 years earlier by a legal defense fund whose board she had once sat on. Certainly there's no statute of limitations preventing the committee from weighing allegations of attempted rape against a nominee to a lifetime seat on the highest court in the land. Besides, since Judge Kavanaugh has flatly denied the accusation, his honesty now, not as a teenager, is at issue. The committee should ask probing questions of all parties. Just as Mr. Judge has given inconsistent statements to the press, there are discrepancies in the accounts of how drive. Blazy has described the alleged events. It's possible that she is misremembering events or even making them up, although it's hard to see how people could imagine themselves benefiting from doing that. In the few days since Drive, Blazy's name became public. She has already suffered, as she knew she would. She's been forced into hiding with her family after receiving death threats. But so far, Senate Republicans seem more concerned with getting Judge Kavanaugh confirmed than in getting to the truth of the accusation against him. Republicans know that the Senate majority is at risk on November 6, and they want to seize the chance to give the court a solid right-wing majority for years to come. This has been a drive-by shooting when it comes to Kavanaugh, Senator Lindsey Graham told reporters on Tuesday, giving the cynical game away in one compact statement. I'll listen to the lady, but we're going to bring this to a close. Follow the New York Times opinion section on Facebook and Twitter at Night Opinion. A version of this article appears in print on, on page A22 of the New York edition with the headline, We deserve better than this spectacle. Order reprints, today's paper, subscribe.